this meeting to order. What is our first item? Sorry. <laughs> Roll call, please. Dr. Bofi, present. Mr. Castillo? Here. Dr. Davis? Here. Ms. Ellis? Ms. Ellis is not present. Mr. Garvey? Here. Ms. Holloway? Here. Mr. Mallory? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Ms. Orange Jones? Ms. Orange Jones is not present. Mr. Rock? Here. Ms. Boshe? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. What's our first item? First item is approval of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Rock. And we need a second. Thank you, Ms. Holloway. Are there any objections? Hearing none, motion passes. What's our next item? Next item, consideration of the 2023-2024 minimum foundation program formula proposal. Um, just to be a motion. Thank you. Mr. Castile. Madam President, uh, we have before us an item for consideration of the MFP formula proposal. Uh, the last time we met on this issue, we passed and made a recommendation to the Louisiana legislature. We have now received uh, feedback from both the Senate and the House, um, but there are different opinions. And it's my understanding that the legislature, both chambers are now having some discussions to give us perhaps some additional guidance. Uh, and I'm not sure that we as a body have enough information at this point to make a decision. And I would therefore respectfully request that we defer this item. Um, I know that there are a number of educators that are very interested in this particular topic, and many of them are here today. But that said, I'd like to move that we defer the item. I'll second. Uh, okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Castile and a second by Mr. Mellorin. Um, so, members, we do have a public comment. Do you have any uh, questions or comments that you would like to put on the floor before we take public comment? No? Okay, so we have uh, several stacks of public comment. The first group of individuals are here for information. So I'm gonna read the names to you in case you would like to call any of these individuals up at some point during the meeting. Um, Maria Deloach with Jefferson Federation of Teachers. Lauren Francis with Jefferson Federation of Teachers. Heather Cushman with Louisiana Federation of Teachers. Janet Grillo with St. Tammany. Roy Grillo, St. Tammany. Carrie Witchers, St. Tammany Federation. Marcus Thomas, Louisiana Association of Educators. Lori Drake, Louisiana Federation of Teachers, St. Tammany. Christina Cole Mills, retired teacher advocating for teachers. Jerry Hellman, UTNO. And um, I think there's another one for Heather Cushman, Louisiana Federation of Teachers. These individuals um, did not check whether or not they wish to speak. So I'll pause now and let you guys let us know. Um, again, they're here for, well, this one's for information. Barbara Sharp, did you wish to speak? No. Okay. Christina Timmons, did you wish to speak? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you can come on up. And Terry Johnson, uh, Chris, Kristen Timmons, I'm sorry, is a St. Tammany teacher and support staff. And then Terry Johnson, Calcasieu Federation of Teachers, did you wish to speak? Okay, thank you. Let's go back in a different step. Eric Sari. Um, does not wish to speak. I'll put it in that stack. And then I'll call up Dr. Tia Mills with Louisiana Association of Educators, Deshay Oaks representing Self, and Ben Cox, West Baton Rouge Association, and then Brant Osborne, St. Tammany Federation of Teachers. So if the five of you will come up, I see we have five chairs here. And then I'll call the next five just to let you know that you are um, on deck. Stephanie Underwood with St. Tammany Federation. Larry J. Carter, Louisiana Federation of Teachers and School Employees. Lauren Jewett, Louisiana National Board Certified Teacher, designee, and UTNO and LFT. 
Robin Clark, Louisiana National Board Certified Teacher representing herself, Willie Singleton, Guillory, St. Landry Federation of Teachers and School Employees. So we have five people up, five people on deck. Please identify yourself before you speak. You'll want to put the mic on, so you press the button and make sure you have a green light. And then pull the mic close to you because they don't always work that great. Welcome to the Bessie meeting. Ooh, we'll get started on this side. Good morning. My name is Ben Cox. I'm with West Baton Rouge Parish. I'm a teacher. I teach special education. I've been teaching for 20 years. My wife is also a teacher. I'm just here to support the raise for teachers. I just wanted to share with you a few numbers, and I'll defer the rest of the time. So after 20 years, I make $60,303. Next year, I'll make $60,833. So the first was sixty thousand five hundred, I should say. So that's a three hundred and thirty dollars pay raise. For the last sixty years, the inflation rate for the United States is three point eight percent, not counting most recent times. From one year to the next, a three hundred and thirty dollar raise that equals one half of one percent raise, and that's what my parish will have the next year. So not only are we not keeping up with inflation, we're losing ground. We have three children. My wife's a teacher. I'm a teacher. It's very difficult to maintain the lifestyle we've had if we're getting a one half of one percent raise, which in reality is not even a raise. So that is what I wanted to say. I appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fox. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Tia Mills, special education teacher from East Baton Rouge Parish, currently serving as the president of the Louisiana Association of Educators. I come before you today to sound the alarm on the dire need for higher pay raises for educators this session. The state of my beloved profession is in a crisis. We are in the midst of a serious educator shortage. Our best and brightest college students are no longer majoring in education. We're not retaining our most highly qualified educators. Our most brilliant teachers and support professionals are leaving the profession at alarming rates to work in other states if they have the ability to, and it's no surprise why. Since 2012, Louisiana's average salary rank has plummeted from 27th to 43rd. A $2,000 raise for teachers and $1,000 raise for ESPs is simply Something that we must do in order to move to the Southern Regional Average or go beyond this is because it is not enough to sufficiently support a family and it does not help us complete with other states economically. Our educators have made significant improvements in our national education rankings despite having to work themselves to the bone during this recruitment and retention crisis over the past few years. Despite having to cover other classrooms during their planning periods, Due to a shortage of substitutes and feeling burnt out at the end of the day, they still deliver. Despite working through a global pandemic that swept the nation, they still delivered. Our educators have delivered. They have proven to be hardworking, dedicated, qualified, relentless, and able to work wonders in times of crisis and chaos over the last few years. Let's keep our educators in our state and show them that they are, in fact, appreciated here at home. I'll use myself as an example. With 17 years of experience, I will still be, and, and, I'm sorry, and a terminal degree, I will still be making less than $60,000 a year. We have a $1.6 billion surplus, and the REC recognized $806 million last week. The legislature can afford to fund these pay raises. I'm sure every one of you have a story about how an educator impacted your life for the better. As a matter of fact, some of you are educators. If we don't pay our educators, we will continue to leave and they will take their talents elsewhere, which robs our children of that same ex experience. It is imperative that Bessie submits the recommendation to fund our raises back to the legislature and not delay on this. We cannot let that happen. Increase the pay raises for educators and invest, and invest in the future of public education today. Thank you. Hi, 
have Kristen Timmons. Um, as of last Friday, I'm no longer an educator, at least not paid to be. Um, you can't take the educator out of me though, my son's sitting here so he can learn a little civics lesson. Um, I am here on behalf of every single teacher that cannot be here right now. Um, there are some who are taking a much needed summer break, and then there are also many across the state right this second sitting in a classroom with students who are on their last day of school, or almost last day of school, who can barely contain their excitement. The students. The teachers are simply trying to wrangle them and keep them calm. <laughs> I quit teaching not because I don't love it, not because I don't think it's the most important profession in this life, I quit teaching because for several years now, I have stood in front of my class at the board and thought, I don't get paid enough to deal with this. The wonderful things that happen in my classroom, the light bulb moments, those moments when I can inspire kids, I was a high school geometry teacher, the moments that I could get them to love math, those moments, the benefit of those, no longer outweigh the stress and the realities of day-to-day -day teaching. And on top of that, our pay really prevent, provides no significant benefit. As a high school certified math teacher, I graduated with a degree that was one math class short of a mathematics degree. I could literally go anywhere I wanted right now and probably make a six-figure salary. And that is what so many young people are realizing right now. And that is also what many current educators are realizing. They can go somewhere else, do something less stressful, spend more time with their own family and children, and make more money. I personally know, including myself, five teachers who within the past, well, since the pandemic started, have quit and are no longer in education, in anywhere. So that is five teachers worth of talent that you have lost. And just my own personal, and I'm not a person who likes to sit and brag about myself, but I will for this moment, I taught for 19 and a half years. And I was a teacher of the year, and I was the president of the Louisiana Association of Teachers of Mathematics. And that is what you are losing. Good afternoon, board members. Uh, I'm Brian Osborne. I'm the president of the St. Tammany Federation of Teachers and School Employees. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to all of you. Um, two years ago, I was a teacher in the COVID classroom. I taught gifted English at uh, Salado High School. So my experiences as an educator are still fresh in my mind. Um, as a union leader with collective bargaining, the processes we use to help employees put me face to face with every single job class. So not just teachers, but also bus owner operators, some of whom are here with me today, food service workers, power professionals, secretaries. All of these folks, when they're with me, take off their professional mask and they just speak, whether it's venting, but they let me know what they want, they let me know what they need. And I think what they need right now um, is for you to prioritize raises as opposed to stipends or any other form of assistance. We have to invest in these folks who serve the children of my great parish at every level of service and also the children across uh, this state. In my first year, along with my executive vice president, we negotiated the largest single year financial package in the history of St. Tammany. Part of that included differential stipends, which is something that you guys put together, and I get it. These, these plans are very intricate and we try to be balanced, but I can tell you it was a mixed bag. Um, even though the bottom line was teachers got about a 7% raise, a lot of people were angry that some people got some of the stipends while others didn't. Um, 
maybe we should have gone another direction. So you have a chance to go another direction. I look at those as lanyards. Okay, that's cherries on top of a half-baked cake that doesn't have icing covering all the way around. We've got to focus on what's most needed right now. I just think differential stipends are not that critical piece. They are land yacht. We don't have enough money to cover everybody. I would urge this board not to wait. You're going to blink and this legislative session is going to be over. I know it is frustrating to put something together, to put energy into something and have it sent back. But maybe this board can flex a little bit and assert itself, come back with something different, but we'll do everything we can to help leverage and help you get this through. We will get you those voices. These people are suffering. Now look, this is in the 60s. I wanted 100 people here today. We've got to build our capacity. But we will get those voices, I promise you, because these people are hurting and these people are leaving. We cannot afford to have one more person leave. We're hemorrhaging employees in St. Tammany Parish. We had over 100 job vacancies after job fair last year. I came in in 2002, there were 300 people for 10 jobs. 10. I don't know how I got hired, but I mean, I guess they saw something in me, but I was lucky back then. I guarantee I could turn in my uh, president badge and go back to the classroom. And I sometimes think of it, I really do. But I miss, I miss the joy of that. But I, I thank God sent me for a purpose, and that purpose is to help save public education, and I hope you will hear the voices today. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. We're at noon now. Um, my name is Deshea Oaks. I'm coming as a public school or library and classroom teacher from Concordia Parish. Concordia Parish is a rural area. I'm asking you not to defer this. Send it to the back to the legislature with the salaries that we need as teachers and support personnel. If it was up to me, I would say twenty thousand and ten thousand, but I know that's a little much. But anyway. I'm a 26 year, I just finished 20 year 26 veteran of Concordia Parish School District. And let me give you some experiences. There is a classroom of math, sixth grade, that this year went through four teachers. The first one, because she could not support her family, had to resign and go back to a public sector job that paid more. The other two, and based on what you, the previous speaker said, the mental health of those next two individuals, they could not last. There was also a six week sub in between those two. We finally found one that came in February and stayed to May, and she told me when she left the other day, I got out last Friday, so she said I probably won't be back. So we have a sixth grade math position. Among the other positions that are available in my parish, kind of like you, there may be a hundred positions by the time August comes. We need this pay raise for teachers and support staff. And I know there's a lot of myths and untruths that you've heard because you tell people, oh, we gave you a raise. You did, but my insurance went up by $500. To me, that's not a raise to me because I still have to support my family. You also hear that um, I also have another coworker of mine at my school that has to work a double another job after school, waitressing, to support her family. If we had these pay raises and these pay increases that we need, for our support people and our teachers, they would not have to do a second or third or fourth job. Please do not defer this bill. I ask you that personally. And by the way, there's another myth that's been going on. We're not losing teachers. I live, where I live, there's a bridge that separates me from the state of Louisiana to the state of Mississippi. We lose teachers every single year to the county that's right across the river. All they have to do is travel three miles. I think that's how long that bridge is. Two, get five to ten thousand dollars more in the state of Mississippi. The state of Louisiana needs to do something now before from ten years from now, y'all may have to end up in the classroom again. So please do not defer this bill. Thank you. Dr. Wilkie? Yes, sir. As you're calling up next room, I just wanted to add a comment, maybe some clarifications to our motion. Um, the motion to defer, just from wanting to want to take away that we want the latest to pass a recommendation that I'm frankly still a fan of, but um, it still has to get to the Louisiana legislature. 
Frank had the devotion to the birds to help facilitate the process, not to slow it down. So just wanted to offer that as a point of clarification. Thank you, Mr. Castile. So I see Mr. Carter. Um, do we have Stephanie Underwood, Lauren Dewitt, uh, Willie Singleton Guillory, or Robin Clark? Okay. Are you Miss uh, Willie? Do you want to come to the front? Okay. And then while she comes to the front, we'll have Cynthia Posey, Aspen Williams, Cheryl Jones, and Colette Tippy uh, to come up. We'll start with you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Underwood. I'm the Executive Vice President of the St. Samuel Federation of Teachers and School Employees. I am here to tell you that we are in a crisis. And I'm pretty sure you know by now, but I'm going to reiterate that. We have good, experienced employees who are leaving every day. Most school employees work a second or even a third job, some fourth job, just to make ends meet. That shouldn't be the case. Everyone in this room has had to go through some type of school program to get to where they are today. In fact, probably all of you can name someone if you were asked, who was your favorite teacher? Our employees have the power to have the power and the opportunity to shape the future, but you have the power and the opportunity to help ensure we have the quality people to be in those positions by increasing the pay to a livable wage. Because right now it's not. Thousands of people are looking at you to do the right thing and to show them that they are valued. Last year, I was talking to someone in the legislature, I won't name names, and when I mentioned the neighboring states giving more money than Louisiana, I was told, those places seem like a great place to live. Do we want to be that guy? Do we want to push people to other states and lose our talent? I hope not. I don't want to be that guy. But it's happening. Like it was stated earlier, we are hemorrhaging employees. And we need you and your power to help fix this. And we need, we need y'all to take action. Please do the right thing. Put all funding into permanent raises. So that way they are reoccurring. And, they don't, and employees don't have to wonder what their salary is going to be the next year because some of that was just a stack. We need permanent raises, and we need them now. And I understand about the deferring, but I do feel like y'all need to make a statement and send it back, send it with all permanent raises. Thank you. Good morning. First, I'd like to And good morning, morning again. Good job. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank God for the opportunity to come before you and testify on behalf of all school employees throughout the state of Louisiana and to advocate specifically for St. Landry Parish school teachers and school employees, of which I was an employee for 31 years, recently retired in 2020 and taught middle school there. And uh, I don't know, some teachers, you can't ever stop teaching, so I'm still doing some things. Again, I come before you humbly. Give us your name for the record, please. I'm sorry. Give us your name for the record. I'm sorry, I thought I stated it. Okay. Really, Singleton Guillory, St. Landry, Federation of Teachers, and School Employees. Thank you. It is of paramount importance to put all available funding from the MSP into a permanent, across the board, level four pay raise. This move would serve to boost the morale throughout school districts in Louisiana, keep qualified teachers, and hopefully attract others. 
I've seen differentiated stipends. I've seen them lower the morale of schools across the district. Teachers at the onset, case in point, of any given school year is given a roster. And that roster includes students who will be placed in AP classes, students who have 504 labels, and students with IEPs through inclusion. But yet, we are willing and have been willing to teach all children because we believe that all children deserve a good education. But should it be at the expense of being paid less? We want to ponder that. We want to think about that. We want to ask ourselves, should it be at the expense of being paid less? And I hear a lot about money. I want to leave you with a paradox. And that paradox is, it's not about the money, but it's about the money. Because it, it takes money to make the world go round. It will take money to keep qualified teachers in the classroom, effective teachers. I heard in another session that the numbers are decreasing as far as teachers in the classroom. I don't think they counted my parish. <coughs> the numbers may be decreasing, but are the teachers, are the people who have been placed in the classroom as teachers, do they have a proper knowledge base, content knowledge base to teach the classes? Ma'am, please wrap up your comments. I'm sorry? Please wrap up. Your, the time okay. has expired. Please wrap up your comments. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say thank you for being heard. And I'm going to ask that you send this legislative, this uh, proposed raise back to the legislature today. Thank you very much, St. Landry Federation of Teachers and School Employees. Thank you, ma'am. <coughs> Good afternoon. My name is Robin Clark. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher. I'm a part of the Louisiana NBCT Network. I'm a board member there. I'm also an LAE member. I'm a public school pre-K teacher. I do it because I love it. Not because I have a shining resume. I do it because I love it. With that MBA, I could walk and do many other things. But I choose to stay. I love my community. I love my school. I love my students. I love what I do. I'm bent and made, formed, and that is my purpose to do. So I enjoy what I do. But money does matter. The, two, the teachers that I work with, there are about six teachers in my, on my grade level. Every one of us have summer work. In some form, some are doing tutoring, some are working after school, some are doing boys and girls club, some are doing summer school just to make the ends almost meet. I spoke to this cafeteria worker as she departed. Uh, she's going to another school in our district. And she said, you know, I'm just trying to figure out how to make just a, a little bit more money just to make it. So she'll probably, with her deferred pay, she'll probably bring home about $2,200 a month. And in today's lifestyle, that's not a lot of money, $2,200 for the entire month. It's, tough. it's difficult out there. It's hard. Gas goes up. Insurance goes up. Personal needs go up. Household expenses go up. Gas bill, water bill, electric bill. Those things go up. And your salary has to cover those things or you're going to debt farther and farther. So it's important that you support an across the board pay raise, salary increase, for everyone. We all put in those hours. We're putting in the same time, the same days, the same love, the same effort. We want our children to succeed in Louisiana. That's why we're here. And yes, the student teachers are leaving to Texas, to other states. And it's sad because we can't retain those teachers because the salaries don't compete. And so if they can go, they do. 
They can retire, they are. But there are some of us who are still trying to yet hold on. Invest in us a little bit more. Help us enjoy the work that we know we have. Help us stay on task. Help us stay in the classroom. Give us the raise. Give us all the raise. Treat us all equally. We're all putting our heart into the work. We all believe in Louisiana. That's why we're here. We're here fighting for Louisiana. And help our children. Help our children and keep them first by paying our teachers across the board. Please support that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Bessie board members. Uh, my name is Lauren Jewett. I'm a National Board Certified Teacher. Uh, I'm a special education teacher, and I currently teach in Orleans Parish. And I'm a United Teacher of New Orleans member. Uh, I'm here today to urge you to take action on the Senate Education Committee's recommendations to include the Level 4 MFP increase uh, and fund across the board salary pay raises for our state teachers and school support staff. Educators, both teachers and school support staff, help our students thrive academically and socially. But sadly, many of our state's educators are struggling to thrive themselves. Teachers and school staff do go above and beyond. In fact, we are often touted as superheroes. But let's be clear, teachers and school staff are human beings. We have passion, but we also have limits. We have extraordinary compassion, but we also have bills to pay. Many of our educators, many of whom have master's and doctorate degrees and professional certifications, are working second jobs and extra roles, like summer school or aftercare, to cover student debt, high rent, and increasing insurance premiums. In Louisiana, the teacher wage penalty is 27.8%. That's how much less public school teachers are paid compared to other college-educated workers. Every school year, I see colleagues who love teaching and love their students decide to be teaching altogether because of the stress and the lower pay. If we care about our students, then we must care about the people who support and meet them in the school buildings each day. I also want to speak briefly about the unique situation that we have in New Orleans. The legislature proposed the solution of leaving the raise to the discretion of individual school districts. Going this route would further erode teacher morale and trust. In Orleans Parish, we have struggled to get all charter schools to pay previous state raises under clear and transparent conditions. Pay clarity and pay parity have been persistent issues. Many teachers and school support staff often cannot find salary schedules at their public enrollment charter schools, even when they request such information. Past pay raises have been instituted as one-time bonuses or yearly temporary stipends, rather than a measure of financial stability built into salary. Additionally, the avenue to raise teacher pay that is tied to unfunded accrued liability through retirement would actually not impact our New Orleans charter school teachers because around 60% of our schools, including my own, do not participate in TRSL. It is imperative that we invest in our educators in the same way that educators show up every day to invest in our students. Please pass uh, the teacher pay raise and the school support staff pay raise. Thank you. Mr. Carter. Good morning. Larry Carter, President of the Louisiana Federation of Teachers and School Employees. Last week, the Senate Education Committee actually returned the MFP proposal to you with recommendations asking that Bessie consider formulas um, that provide desperately needed raises for our teachers and support workers and also to consider the constraints on our current budget process. The differential pay stipend in the original MFP proposal was removed in recognition of the budget constraints as outlined by the President of the Senate. We're asking that you follow those recommendations and send back a formula that prioritizes a permanent pay raise in level four of the MFP. The differentiated pay does not guarantee that every teacher will receive a raise, only a stipend. And if they do not receive a stipend for one year, there's no guarantee they will receive it in the future. School districts could use the funding to give all math teachers a boost one year, and then the next year they can determine that science teachers are the highest priority. So they take the stipend away from math teachers and give it to science teachers. This will create tension between teachers at a moment when we need to all come together. Stipends won't give teachers any financial security. 
It will only serve to further destabilize the profession because a teacher won't be able to predict their salary from one year to the next. Moreover, the stipend would only go to teachers. What about all the vital job classifications that our students rely on? Our students are facing a mental health crisis like we've never seen before, and they rely on school nurses, therapists, counselors, our professional um, support staff, but none of these job classifications stand to seek extra income under the differential pay stipend. Despite marginal pay increases in the years past, Louisiana continues to fall behind the southern regional average for teacher salaries. Last year, the gap was roughly $3,500, but it has fallen further behind since last year. We did a statewide survey of teachers and school employees. 97% of teachers and 98% of staff felt that they did not make enough to raise other raise, of, of make enough to raise a family. 91% of those teachers also said that the statewide pay raises they received in recent years were less than an increase in the cost of living. 84% of teachers and two-thirds of staff said they have considered leaving their current position. Make no mistake, we're at a crisis point. 37% of teachers are working at least one other job. They're driving for waiter, Uber, Lyft. Some are running the checkout lines at the neighborhood grocery store or waiting tables at restaurants. According to the Louisiana Department of Education, Louisiana has 1,200 teacher vacancies, but that isn't the whole story. In 2021-2022, the Louisiana Department of Education also reported 5,349 uncertified teachers and 8,065 teachers teaching outside of their certification area. That means a third of teachers in classrooms today are uncertified or teaching outside of their certification area, up from 23% in 2019-2020. If we want every student to have a highly qualified and experienced teacher, which is the most important factor in a student's success, then we are falling far short of that goal. You could say that the real vacancy rate, when combined with the number of uncertified teachers and teachers teaching outside of their certification areas, is 13,414. During a school visit months ago, I met a teacher who had been working at Subway the week prior. One week he's making sandwiches, the next he's in the classroom. Nothing against him, but are we getting highly qualified teachers? I'm asking that you prioritize the additional funding by having it go directly to our raises for teachers and school employees in the MFP next year. The only way to ensure our frontline educators see a raise is to put it in level four of the MFP and a vote to send that formula back to the legislature today. If you do not send the MFP back to the legislature today, you risk teachers and school employers receiving nothing. In years past, MFP would probably be able to move quickly through the legislative process by the legislature voting for a suspension of the rules. I do not believe that getting the required number of votes to do that is possible. Maybe in the past, but not today. We cannot risk delaying sending the MFP back and losing the chance to support those who are in the classrooms giving everything they have to our children. We owe it to the teachers, school employees, and their students to invest in their future, and we can't afford to fall any further behind. And yes, we do clearly understand that right now the vote that you're talking about is to actually delay and wait until um, you have some more guidance from the legislature, so we certainly understand that, and we hope that when it comes back, you actually, act, actually listen to some of the testimonies you heard today and, and, and consider certainly making sure that teachers and school employees get a pay raise. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Thank you. So I call that Cynthia Posey, Aspen Williams, Cheryl Jones, Colette Tippy, Craig Ilbo. Il Brew. Sorry, Craig. And then we'll have Valencia Johnson on deck. My name is Cheryl Jones. I am currently with United Teachers of New Orleans, but for 25, 27 years I was a teacher. 
16 of those years, I worked at a charter school. I believe that the children came first, and to ensure their well-being, I educated and nurtured the whole child. I was honored to be rated highly effective on my evaluations. I thought that I was valued and respected for doing my job, but I thought wrong. For three years, I asked the CFO, the CEO, and my principal, why? Why am I not getting my state pay raise? I was told the raises were not for charter schools, but I knew better. For each year, I sent the pay raise circular from the LDOE to the administration and teachers. I was called aggressive and a troublemaker by the CEO. I filed a complaint with the state each year to get my raises. The LDOE told me the raises were added to the MFP and the charter school should have the money. The LDOE said an audit would be conducted. One year, the raises came as two stipends instead of including it in the salary schedule. That year, the CFO resigned and two months later, the school's audit revealed a budget shortfall of $1.8 million. The CEO laid off 10 administrative positions and gave her resignation to the board. Eventually, the pay raises were distributed to all employees after the LDOE placed a call to the CFO. This is why it is so important to specify pay raises for teachers and support staff. Because without including raises in level four, teachers would have no recourse to get their salaries increased. Charter leaders could choose to use it on pay increases for their leadership team who already make six figures. Or they could choose to use it any number of ways. I am asking you today to follow the Senate Education Committee guidance to raise teacher pay by $2,000 and support staff by $1,000 in level four permanent pay raises. Please send it back today. Next. Good afternoon. My name is Aspen Williams. I live in Orleans Parish and I'm here on behalf of the K-12 teachers who could not make it today because they're winding down the school year before the summer starts. Late last year, our members in New Orleans learned that the state mandated raises for teachers and support staff would not go to them. We then had to fight tooth and nail just to ensure that the raises they were supposed to get actually went to them. Unless these raises are in level four, we risk teachers and staff in Orleans Parish never seeing these raises. And we all understand that here in Louisiana, the working conditions for the teachers are the learning conditions for our students, children, and future. These same schools that I previously mentioned had not provided curriculum and supplies for the students in the classrooms, forcing the teachers to spend their own money out of their own pocket on curriculum and supplies. If it were not for our teachers stepping up, these students would have nothing to learn when they came to school. And this is why differentiated pay stipends do not work. Our educators in Orleans Parish are going out of their way to ensure the success of students, and we owe it to them to give them permanent raises that allows them to continue teaching. We have students that are regularly telling our members that they feel like they are being abandoned because their teachers cannot stay at the school for more than a year or two. Teachers and support staff have to choose between the necessary work of educating students and being able to make ends meet. We have teachers in Orleans Parish with second jobs, teachers with more than 50 students in their classrooms, teachers without planning periods because they're covering other classes, teachers who are burned out and are suffering mentally. And the one thing that connects all of these teachers and support staff is that despite everything, they still wake up every day to do God's work and educa educate students. Use the Senate guidance. We need permanent pay raises in level four of MFP, 2,000 for educators and 1,000 for support staff. Again, these raises need to be in level four MFP. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, esteemed Dusty members. My name is Colette Tiffey. I am representing the United Teachers of New Orleans. We represent the charter school teachers and staff of New Orleans. 
and we're asking you to follow the guidance of the President of the Senate and send a permanent $2,000 raise for teachers and $1,000 raise for support staff in the Level 4 funding formula. Teachers and school employees need you to prioritize a permanent raise. We have schools where classes are covered by substitutes for most of the year. Other classes that are doubled up with over 50 students in a class and multiple subjects at one time. One resounding refrain I hear from teachers is that their students are constantly anxious about which teacher will be the next to abandon them because they've seen so many teachers and school staff leave over the course of a year or the course of the time that they're at school. Differentiated pay will not provide the stability that educators and students need. Students deserve better. Students deserve consistency. Teachers and staff are not stressed about how they will pay their bills. School staff are living on the edge. We just, just recently staff at one school were paid less than 24 hours later than expected, and some of those staff were worried about their lights and water being cut off. After having to push multiple charter schools across the Orleans to implement the required pay raises correctly for the past several years, we do not believe that differentiated pay raises uh, that are in the level one funding formula will provide stability our students need. Uh, today, we're here to ask you to raise teacher salaries by 2,000 and raise support staff salaries by 1,000. The educators of our state need clear and consistent increases. Stipends are not clear and consistent, and we can do better. There's sufficient funding to pay these raises, and we're asking you to send this back to the legislature today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia Posey, uh, today I'm representing the Tanchpahoa Federation of Teachers. Uh, they're still in school and unable to come, and one of our members asked me to come and read her statement to you. My name is Brittany Smith. I'm a third grade teacher at a public school in Tanchpahoa Parish. Four years ago, I accepted my first teaching position. I knew the money wouldn't be great, but I also knew that I had a passion for teaching and the work that I was going to do would be important. Little did I know that the money would become inadequate and I would be working three jobs to keep up with the changes to our economy. With the extra hours now adding into the already long teaching hours, burning, burnout came sooner than expected. I didn't think four years later that my passion would turn into, is it really worth it? How much longer can I sustain this? I'm only 27. What's going to happen when I want to start a family? How can I afford that? I hear people say in response, just get another job. You knew what you were getting into, you, into when you signed up for this. There will be other people to come along and take your place. But the truth is, if things don't change, there won't be anyone else. I graduated college in 2017. That year, there were 250 people graduating in education. Fast forward to this year, which there are 18 people graduating in education. People keep expecting teachers to put up with so much for so little, but what happens when you have no more teachers? We have the ability to make a change right now to reverse some of the damage done to our educators and future generations of people who are thinking about teaching. If we don't make these changes, there will likely be no one else to take my place asking you for change. I am asking for a raise, a permanent pay raise, in level four of the MFP. Brady is faced with a choice starting a family and staying in education. How is that fair? The policy choice that was before you today, that was before you today, was to make a decision about what is best for education. By deferring, you are endangering the teacher pay raise because the reality of being able to move the instrument through the legislature, as the legislature is now in getting that vote to move it quickly, there's a good chance that won't happen. Please think about the educators, think about the children this affects in our schools. Make the right decision. You have the ability to do that, but will you make that choice? Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Craig Bilbrew, and I'm a board member of the East Baton Rouge Parish Association of Educators, and I'm also an educator. Um, what we're talking about today is, is not whether or not teachers deserve a raise or should get a raise. We're talking about you all's vote in the position of whether or not you want to postpone this uh, before it goes to session, which puts us in jeopardy of not getting a raise this year. When I, I'm speaking as myself as an individual. I knew that I wanted to be a teacher when I met my kindergarten teacher, Ms. Houston, 
And all 12 years of going through school, when I would tell somebody that I wanted to be a teacher, they would say, oh, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You don't want to be a teacher. You won't make any money. You won't make enough money. And I would always talk for those 12 years, it's not about the money. It's not about the money. Why do they say that? Well, fast forward to after I graduated, I got an Army scholarship. They don't pay for teachers. So I majored in business. And after I did all of that, I did the Master's of Art in Teaching, and I got my certification to become a teacher, a foreign language teacher. As you all know, there is a teacher shortage, but less than 3% of the teachers in the United States are African American males. And you know how important it is to see one in order to be one whenever you grow up. I could make a lot more money doing something else, but my heart is set on education. When I was a young boy, I first started out, I was a, a babysitter. I taught Sunday school, vacation Bible school. Teaching is in my blood. I want to be a teacher, but I should not have to choose between something that I'm passionate about and making the world a better place and being able to pay my car note on time, paying my house note on time, being able to pay my light bill, having water or hot water, as a matter of fact. I shouldn't have to work two and three jobs with a side hustle, which is a legal side hustle. I make t-shirts, I decorate for parties, I do balloon arches. You know, in the summertime, that's not a vacation. That's a time for you to go and get two jobs for eight weeks so that you can make some kind of money that can sustain you for the little bit of money that you'll be making for the next 10 months of the school year. And when you're tired and burnt out and you need to do this for 30 to 35 years, how much energy can you come in there? Our children need to be engaged. They need to be excited. You have to be walking around the room and going desk to desk and student to student all day just to get off from work at 2.30, to change clothes, to make it to your second job at 3.30, and work till 11 o'clock. And you all know we're grading paper, doing tests, and making engaging lesson plans. If you postpone this today, it will jeopardize us from getting a raise for the upcoming 23-24 school year. And I would like to leave you all with these two quotes from the great James Baldwin. Number one, everything that is faced cannot be changed, but nothing can be changed until it's faced. And then the other thing is, I can't hear what you say because I see what you do. Thank you all for your time, and I hope you have a great day. <coughs> Thank you. Next we have Valencia Johnson. Good afternoon. Go ahead and pull it close, Ms. Johnson. Good afternoon. My name is Valencia Johnson. I am representing myself and I'm also representing the members of the East Baton Rouge Parish Association of Educators. I am an educator. I am a librarian at an elementary school in East Baton Rouge Parish. My job entails managing a collection of 16,000 books. I also teach classes. I am also an interventionist. I have 16 kids for intervention. I am also the site techno the technology facilitator. In my hours of working, I do all of those jobs. And as an educator, with a master's degree, and I have been working in the district for 13 years. I still only make about $55,000 a year. And when you take out taxes, when you take out retirement, it's not a livable wage, especially for a degree person who has a higher level of degree. I have members, support workers, who are supposed to be doing interventions, who are supposed to be pulling groups, and they're in a classroom. 
they're in the classroom holding the class because we don't have teachers. If we continue this trajectory, burning out our educators every day, burning out our support workers every day, they can't do the jobs that they're supposed to be doing because they are doing all of the jobs at the school site. We have too much stuff on us. And then the audacity to not even be considered for a raise or a less raise because, oh, you work this position, but I'm doing the job of a teacher every day. <coughs> we should consider all of these things that are happening in the school system. We should consider that our workers are work to the bone. And when they have to get off of their degree job and then go and work at the Dollar General, the Pizza Hut, Waiter, Uber, after school tutoring because you need the money. Teach summer school because you definitely need the money. Ms. Johnson, can you go ahead and wrap up? Okay, I, I will. Thank you. The point is that we need our rights and we can't wait. We're hemorrhaging teachers every single day. They're leaving by the bus loads. And if we don't do something now, We're going to fail the children, and Louisiana will not have a future. Thank you. So, board members, we have a motion on the floor. Um, we've had public testimony. I'm opening the floor for your comments, questions, and discussion. Yes, Dr. Davis. Um, I just want to say that it breaks my heart that we could not get an MFP proposal with a pay raise for teachers through today. And um, shame on all of us if we run out of time and it doesn't happen. Anybody else? Members, is there any objection to the motion? Hearing none, the motion passes. I believe that concludes our agenda, Ms. Davis. Since that's the case, um, this motion, this uh, meeting is adjourned.